The cytosol components required for elongation included a number of elongation factors. It included more GTP, and it included an enzyme called peptidyl transferase, as well as an enzyme called translocase. So here is the first step of elongation. As you might expect, the second amino acid that is to be put into this newly growing chain has to be attached to its amino acid, and so here we see amino acid 2 on its tRNA. And adding this to the complex required GTP, as well as elongation factors. We recognize on the ribosome that is about to begin elongation three sites. We have the A site, which you see on the right. The amino acid entry site, as you might guess, the amino acid 2 with its tRNA, is going to enter at that site. The P site stands for peptidyl site, and you will see why that's called the peptidyl site in just a moment. And the E site is the exit site. Again, you will see why that would be called the exit site as we follow what happens. If you add the appropriate elongation factors, asking which are responsible for the next step, in order for everything to happen that you're about to see, GTP also had to be present. So GTP actually bound to that elongation factor, and as the second amino acid tRNA enters the A site, that GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate. Well, if you keep consuming GDP, you have to start regenerating GTP. So another elongation factor is an enzyme that catalyzes the phosphorylation of GDP again. So you keep regenerating GTP. This elongation factor is not an intimate part of translation, but it is a necessary component to make sure there is always enough GTP to support elongation.